Hello, everyone out there in video land. God is. The Trinity, as we've grown up to understand it, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sometimes we say Holy Ghost means the same thing. But this Trinity that we think of as belonging to God is also a Trinity within us. There are Trinities in everything. And those of you who are into numbers, as I know Jeremy is, may be able to see that there are threes operating in everything. We were speaking about that a little bit this morning, and one of the threes is thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. And uh, Gurdjieff kind of put that forth and then added a fourth, which is the desire of humans to work on themselves, to better themselves. So there is the first force, then there is something opposing that force, and then synthesis, which brings those together so that they can work together, those energies. And Gurdjieff's four, uh, force is the urge that we have to grow through this process. And what is, what are the aspects of this trinity meaning to us? Well, okay, God. God, Son, Holy Ghost. God is spirit, creative energy, the source of everything that is visible and invisible. That wisdom, intelligence, and that love that undergirds everything that is manifest in this world. God is not a person having life, intelligence, love, or power. God is intelligence, love, power. God is that invisible, intangible, but very real something we call life. God is perfect love and infinite power. God is the total of these, the total of all good. Now, it's very difficult for us to really wrap our brains around something as huge as God, the all that is, the source of all. Uh, and sometimes we can wrap our brains around the second aspect of the Trinity a little bit easier. The, the Son. Spirit, God, the Son, and the third aspect of the Holy Spirit. We understand by the Son is that God has mind and has ideas in mind. And the Son represents the expression of those perfect ideas of God. We often think of Jesus, okay, when we think of this aspect of the Trinity. Jesus, who became the Christ by discovering that divinity within himself. And then the third aspect, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this active part of God. It runs around doing good things, okay? It guides us, it directs us. Uh, Jesus, when he was speaking with his disciples uh, and telling them of the things that were going to occur to him and saying that he was going to be leaving, returning to the Father, he shared with them that the Comforter would be coming. He said, my Father will send the Comforter to you in my name. And this Comforter will teach you and guide you and reveal to you all the things that I have been trying to teach you in these three years that I've been with you. The Comforter will come and be your teacher. So we understand that the Holy Spirit is, this is the executive power of God. Now, uh, there is a story that this man was, uh, he had been used to praying to God the Father. And when he found out about God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, he asked whether or not God the Father would be angry or upset if he prayed to God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. And, you know, this might seem a little silly to some of us, okay? But this man was thinking about these aspects of God as three different God persons or beings. In unity, we understand that there is only one presence and power, only one God. And there are many faiths that do have several different gods, a pantheon. We understand that this one God, however, covers it all because this one God can express in innumerable ways. 
and has numerous aspects and attributes. But that is not the same as thinking that there are three separate gods. How many of you, maybe some of you among you, remember an old movie that was called Three Faces of Eve? Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, it was a powerful movie, actually. Joanne Woodward had the lead role, and uh, she won an Oscar for that role. And she was actually the first person to ever get an Oscar for playing one person in three different modes, I might say. Uh, she played uh, a woman that they called Eve White. Now, this was not the real name. The, the story behind the, the movie was that there was an actual patient who was seeing two psychiatrists. And um, her name, the patient's real name, was, was secure and, and hidden for many years. And I believe it was 1975 when the patient's real name came out on whom the movie was based. And in the movie, this woman, because of trauma experienced as a child, uh, she distanced herself from aspects of herself, so much so that she became unaware of when these alter personalities were, were out and, and expressing. And during the treatment, she began to reprocess what had happened to her and felt no longer the need to have these personalities to protect her. And as the story progressed, uh, one of the three is a woman named Jane, and when Jane comes out, she is healed, and she is a whole person. And the Eve White and Eve Black personalities dissipate because they're no longer needed. Well, some people think of the Trinity as God having, like, these three faces, okay, these three different personality things here. And however we conceive of this, it, it is fine, uh, but it can make things a little bit difficult, especially if we are holding on to Old Testament concepts of God, you know, the vengeful, wrathful, and yet the loving, caring, nurturing, okay, the jealous, um, and, and yet the open and receptive God. Charles Fillmore felt that for a lot of people, understanding the Trinity is difficult. But he also felt that because we can see that that same trinity takes different shapes and forms depending on what level it's being expressed, we can understand that when we understand how our mind works. The metaphysical trinity that we work with a lot in unity is mind idea expression. Another is thinker, thought, and action. Again, as I mentioned, when we look at any activity, most often we can see these three different functions. Mind, that is mind or the thinker. That is us when we are using our, we are aware. That is us when we are grasping or taking hold of ideas. And the ideas themselves have their source in God, divine ideas. Our ideas are us grasping God's ideas. The understanding here that we have in unity, and this is coming from Foundations of Unity, Series 2, uh, Book 1. And the, I, the understanding here is that God created the universe in Genesis. But God did not create the manifest world as we know it. God created the substance of which the manifest world is formed, takes shape. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I said that God did not make my car? Okay. Well, God did deliver this car. Okay. And I still haven't named him, but there's a white vehicle uh, out there in the parking lot here uh, to whom I have the keys. Finally, I picked him up on Tuesday. And uh, we had a nice drive back. It's good. You know, I've been trying to get a car since April Fool's Day. Uh, it was an interesting process. And now all I have left is try to figure out what to name it. Okay. 
and I'm trying to work with C's, so I invite you to help me with that, okay? Uh, I tried a couple names out on Linda, the gal next door, and she said, yuck, okay? I said, well, you know, I just don't want Charlie, although Charlie's nice, I'm looking for something a little bit different, okay? I thought Carlisle, and she said, yeah, okay? I thought Castile, and she said the same thing, ugh. Okay. Um, she gave me a baby book. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to, my assignment is to go look through the seas. <laughs> I have yet to do this. <laughs> In fact, she asked me the other day, well, did you come up with something yet? I said, no, <laughs> no. I thought about snow uh, because it's super white, but that's not a name that has a C. You know, my name has been with the alliteration. Franklin the Ford Fusion, okay. Uh, Green George, okay, who was my Taurus, okay. Um, Big Red, um, and Sullivan the Silver Subaru, you know, something like that with a, with a ring to it. So you're welcome to help me name it. And realize that we are engaging in this effort for me to name my car, I am engaging the Trinity. I have mind. I'm trying to work with ideas, in this case, names. And when I finally get one, I'm gonna slap it on him and that's gonna be action. The thinker, the thought, the activity, or mind, idea, expression. Everything we do is a process of the Trinity working out in manifestation. Because the Trinity really is a creative process. God did something. God does something. God isn't just is, and neither are we. We are not just is. We think, we do, we create, we change. And this is basically the creative process. And I think it's exciting, and I want to challenge you to take a look at what's going on in your life and try to see if you can recognize the Trinity process happening. Wherever there is creation happening, wherever there is creativity being ex expressed, um, when there are problems or difficulties, there's something happening with this flow of energies between the aspects of the Trinity. And the creative activity of the Trinity is all about uh, expressing ideas. In fact, that's our job. Our job here as human beings, spiritual beings expressing through a human self, is to connect with as many divine ideas as we can and give them shape and form in our life experience. Not only to bless us, but to bless our world as well. Um, I wanted to share a couple of uh, examples where folks used ideas. Now, these were some kids a police officer found a perfect hiding place for watching speeding cars. Uh, one day, the officer was standing on the side of the road. I'm sorry. The officer was amazed because no one was speeding. Everybody was under the speed limit. So he began to investigate, and he discovered what the problem was. A 10-year-old boy was standing on the side of the road with a huge hand-painted sign that said, Radar, trap ahead. And a little bit more investigative work led the officer to the boy's accomplice. There was another boy about 100 yards beyond the radar tra trap with a sign reading tips and holding a bucket full of change. And then I found this idea. Now, granted, all divine ideas are good. But then we take divine ideas and we shape and form them into some strange things. I saw a pair of flip-flops online that actually have grass growing uh, on them so that you could walk on your lawn by, with the flip-flops. Strange, okay? But it is an expression of the Trinity. Someone's mind grab hold of an idea, work with that idea, energize that idea, felt, uh, thought about it, felt about it, and created it, took shape and form. Now, the thing is that we all do this. We all take ideas and shape and form them in our lives. And sometimes the result is beautiful, exciting, okay, uplifting, healing, 
prospering, and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's challenging, and it is a growth opportunity for others. Let me put it that way. Uh, I found something else online, and this is really silly. It was called a helpful tip. Now, uh, there are several scenes in this. And the next time you get a flat tire, snap a photo of it. And it doesn't even have to be your car. Just snap a photo of a flat tire. In the next tip we have, if you take somebody to the emergency room, get a picture of yourself there. A selfie with the emergency room sign showing. I'll tell you what, what this comes to in just a moment. And do this at funerals, uh, at the dentist's office, uh, do this at the veterinarian's office, whenever there's a car crash. And now, when you want to lie to somebody, you can text them and send them one of these photos as proof. I just want to <laughs> I can't make it. I'm at my uncle's funeral and send them a picture that you took at the funeral parlor, someone else's funeral, okay? I can't make it. I got a flat tire. It wasn't on your car. It's a flat tire on someone else's car that you took the picture of. Someone used the trinity to develop this idea. Mind took an idea and said, well, how can I get out from being in trouble every time I miss work? I know what I'll do. I'll snap a picture of somebody's flat tire. And I'll have, I'll have that, and I can email that to the, to the boss and say, this is why I'm late. Okay. But I'll be in, okay. or whatever it is. So hey, I mean, it's kind of fun, but they are all using the Trinity as a creative process. Let's try to use it in a positive, uplifting, healing way. <laughs> you are beautiful. I wanted to share this. This is by Reverend Jan Mahanana. And um, it's positive ideas upon which to build your experiences. God, the creator, she writes, is ever with us. It's, it's like the brilliant stars in the sky that shine above us. Our individual life lights shine uniquely in the darkness around us. Through our hopes, our wishes, and dreams, may similar experiences of this light taking shape and form bless us. And though we are each loved by the same divine force, the creator who created us, we express our individuality differently. Consider this, you, you are unique. Of all the people who have come and gone on the earth since the beginning of time, not one of them is exactly like you. No one has ever lived or is to come who has had your remarkable, unduplicatable combination of abilities, talents, appearance, friends, acquaintances, family, burdens, sorrows, or opportunities. No one has the same combination of secret inside jokes or family expressions that you do. No one, has, no one pays, prays exactly the same way or about exactly the same concerns as you do nor is loved by the same combination of people that love you. You are absolutely unique. Enjoy your uniqueness. You don't have to pretend in order to seem more like someone else. You were not meant to be someone else. You were meant to be you. You don't have to conceal the parts of you that are not like what you see in other people. Nowhere ever in all of history Will the same things be going on in anyone else's mind, soul, or spirit, as they're going on right now in yours? That might be a good thing. If you did not exist, there would be a hole in creation, a gap in history, something missing here. Share your, your uniqueness. No one can reach out to others in the same way that you can or speak your words. No one can convey your meanings. No one can comfort others in the same way that you can. No one can bring your kind of understanding to another person. No one can smile your smile. Share your uniqueness. Let it flow out from among your family and friends and people you meet in the rush and clutter of chaos. 
The gift of yourself was given to you to enjoy. Give yourself away. But also, let yourself receive the gift of yourself as well. And as we move into our meditation experience, we're going to experience this Trinity process. And we're going to be working with the idea of abundance or prosperity. I invite you to sit back. You might like to close your eyes where you're seated. And take several deep breaths as we turn the focus within. Breathe deeply and imagine that breath, that breath of fresh air entering through your nostrils and down and through your throat into your lungs. And from here, this air is oxygenating all of the cells in your body because this blood is oxygenated and this blood flows through, circulating, circulating. And imagine that this breath is calming you, quieting the body, quieting the mind. And breathe in knowing that you are a part of this trinity. This trinity of God, the trinity of mind, the trinity of humankind. This is all about you and in you and flows through you as a creative process always happening. And as you continue to be aware of your breath, imagine that you are reaching up and you grasp those divine ideas. Whatever it is that you have been concerned about, imagine that right now the answer, the divine ideas you need are right there and they are within reach. Imagine that you reach up and you grasp that idea, the very thing that you need. And as you take hold of this idea in your hand, you see it glowing. And you feel love emanating from this idea, this divine idea of God. And now as you listen to this divine idea, you hear it speak. It may not speak in words, but perhaps in feelings, inviting you to accept the feeling that whatever your need is, it is being fulfilled right now. The presence and power of God is at work through this Trinitarian process in you and through you. And so imagine that this divine idea that you're holding in your hand, you take it and you move it to your heart. And you let it move down in your heart, in the chamber of your heart, a very special place. And you know that whenever you need it, when you need to look at it, to hear it, to feel it, it is there with you. All you need to do is become quiet and open. And allow yourself to feel a sense of gratitude, appreciation for this gift, for the gift of the Trinity, and for the opportunity to become aware of how it is working in your life and through your life. And as you begin to move your awareness back to here and now, do so with this feeling of gratitude. The Trinity is at work in your life for good, bringing the transformation that you seek. 
in every area of your life. And this is abundance, to have what you need, and to have faith and security in this process. Thank you, God. Amen.